let's not forget that Aqua is going to try and get all the DNA samples from the men to find out who his dad is. Aloha everybody, my name is Lehua and welcome to the Super Fina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator and host a podcast across worlds. In this video, we are going to do a recap slash review of Oshinoko season two, episode one, aka episode 12. This episode sets the stage for a thrilling journey that goes beyond the glitz and glamour of the spotlight. The episode opens with the curtain rising on the long-awaited stage play adaptation of the mega-hit manga, Tokyo Blade. While the audience is engrossed in the epic battles and heartfelt camaraderie on stage, a different story unfolds backstage, though. Aqua, our protagonist with a hidden agenda, has secured a role in the play to get closer to the La 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 theatrical company, his mother's former workplace. However, the production faces a major hurdle right off the bat. The original screenwriter, Goa, and the manga's author, Abiko, clash over creative differences. Goa's revised script is rejected by the demanding Abiko, threatening to derail the entire project. This throws the production team, led by Sumiaki Raida, into a frenzy as they work tirelessly to create a script that satisfies everyone. We got some key players for this. So Sumika Raida, the lead producer, juggling the demands of the play and the clashing eagles of the creatives. Tashiro Kindaichi, the shrewd director, using the outsider actors like Aqua to challenge the established La La Lai actors and push them to their limits. Goa, the talented but frustrated screenwriter, struggling to balance artistic vision with the author's approval. Abiko Samejima, the aloof and successful mangaka, known for her incredible work but also for her stubborn personality. The episode also introduces us to an impressive cast. We got Taiki Himikawa, the award-winning veteran actor from La La Lai, known for his effortless transformation into his characters. He was not what I was expecting because we first see him as the character in Tokyo Blade. And he looks very cool charismatic like a true protagonist however as an actor yo he looks average he's kind of like that dark horse where when you first see him he's got like shaggy hair glasses facial hair you totally think he's like an average joe like a nobody however he has talent then we got kanarima melt naroshima Akane Kurokawa, and Sakia Kamoshida. The supporting cast, each with their own ambitions, rivalries, and acting styles. Then we got Aqua, our protagonist, whose acting skills are yet to be seen, but whose true purpose lies in uncovering the truth about his past. Aqua is interesting in this because he is literally new to the acting compared to everybody else however they see potential in him and they really want to bring him in to create some competitiveness and it's kind of similar to Taiki. Taiki has this ability where when he's acting people want to match his level and so he kind of brings out their potential like something that they didn't think they had. And because they're feeling Taiki's energy, they're like, man, I want to meet this. I want to be great just like him. Like, I don't want to be outdone. There's like a competitiveness. And I think Aqua is going to be very similar in this aspect. Now, the episode provides a brief glimpse into the world of Tokyo Blade, the popular manga that has captivated millions. This high-octane Bad manga explores themes of friendship, 
love and sacrifice, setting the stage for its theatrical adaptation. Now, with this, I want to talk about what I, I guess I want to talk about what Tokyo Blade is about. <laughs> So with Tokyo Blade, it seems like it's about two sides. One is humans, the other are demons, Oni, and it seems like there was some romance going on. Akane plays as the antagonist, and she was the failed love interest with the protagonist. And then... Something happens, there's a fight, there's war, and both Akane and Aqua play as the antagonist, right? And so it's interesting because there are going to be two sides of this, if you get what I mean. So Taiki is the protagonist, Kana, Melt are supporting characters, however, Kana Arima, I think they call her Arima in the anime. She is the love interest for the protagonist. And then we got Akane, who is the main antagonist. She's the princess. And we got Sakya and Aqua acting as antagonists for her side and such. And uh, I feel like there's also people who are going to be, what's it called? fill-ins, supporting actors, uh, second people. If the main actors can't, you know, perform, then the second choice people will come in too. I think there's going to be like some dynamic going on in the play. So anyways, we got these actors playing as these main characters. And then we got the mangaka. Yeah, we have the mangaka who's kind of has an ego. Abiko, she seems like she's super shy, an introvert. However, she has the gall to say that she wants to revise the script. And what's interesting about this episode is that it starts out giving us like the background of the production, the movie, the play. And they're explained that you know we only have like two hours to do all this and so it's not easy it's not that simple to do one-to-one -one adaptation especially if you want to you know have the characters express themselves and so you gotta tweak it a bit to make sure it fits in that time range two hours like they even did a example for akane's uh character who's like the main antagonist so apparently that character is pretty deep has a lot of layers has many facets she's an amazing character however if they did one-to-one -one adaptation then it would take about maybe seven minutes to do one sentence scene and with the adaptation in the script, it only took like four minutes. And so it's like, oh, man. And Akane noticed a difference because she read the manga. And she's like, I really like this character. And they're tweaking it to be different for the, for the 2.5D production. And so she's like mulling over this. And Akane's like, why don't you just talk to them about it? And she's like, no, I, we can't do that. We're not supposed to do that. And Aqua's like, it's not like they can change it. Just talk to them about it so you can get some clarity. And she did. They explained like why they did it. And they also explained, you know, we love the story too. However, we have to tweak it. Because if we want to make this production, we got to do what we got to do. And we're going to try to match it as much as we can so there is some compassion there is passion for this there is some sincerity however we got the mangaka who's like 
uh, excuse you? <laughs> I think there's like some miscommunications going on because it totally seems like the mangaka is not really good at expressing herself. Like she's already kind of shown us how much of an introvert she is, especially with beautiful people. So she even like said it like, I have a hard time talking to pretty people. And so it's almost like she already has a guard up. And because this story is like her baby, her manga, like the one that makes her name out there, she's very defensive of it. And to guard herself to anyone who has any response like negative like quote negative because it could it could be just you know some comments but she is so defensive she'll view it as negative that it's very hard to communicate with her and if y'all know what that's like it's really hard to get your point across when someone already has their mindset so it's going to be very interesting it feels like there's going to be a a whole dynamic with the mangaka and the production crew and then with all this going on there's going to be some clashing going on with the actors because things might be tweaked some is might some might have like a spotlight while others don't have a spotlight we will see we'll find out so with the play teetering on the brink of cancellation yeah the episode leaves us with a sense of anticipation. Can the production team overcome the challenges? Will Aqua be able to utilize the play to further his investigation? How will the clash of personalities within the cast affect the performance? We do have some foreshadowing uh, theories. One is the clash of creatives. The initial conflict between Goa and the, screen the screenwriter and Abiko the Mangaka suggests future struggles in balancing artistic vision with source material adaptation. This might lead to further rewrites and tension, tension within the production. True, Ta Toshiro Kendaichi's strategy. Kendaichi's decision to include outside actors like Aqua might create friction within the established La 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 actors. This could lead to internal competition, pushing everyone to improve their performance. Three, Aqua's untapped potential. While the episode doesn't showcase Aqua's acting skills, his determination and hidden agenda suggests he might surprise everyone on stage. His performance could be a turning point for him or the play itself. Four, the cast's personalities. Taiki's laid-back demeanor versus his passion for acting on stage hints at a hidden depth to his character. Similarly, the contrasting personalities of Milt, who's trying to improve, and Salkia, who is an arrogant womanizer, suggest potential rivalries or clashes within the cast. Akane, playing the main antagonist, might become a significant obstacle for Aqua in the play and his investigation. Five. Abiko's stubbornness. Abiko's demanding nature and difficulty with criticism foreshadows potential roadblocks in future productions. This could lead to creative differences with the cast and director as well. 6. The Tokyo Blade Story The themes of friendship, love, and sacrifice in the manga could be mirrored in the relationships between the cast members as they work together on the play. This could lead to unexpected friendships or betrayals. These are just some of the potential foreshadows hidden. These are just some of the potential foreshadows hidden within the first episode. As the season progresses, we will keep an eye on how these elements play out and how they impact the drama both on and off the stage. Now, this just seems like we're focusing on Aqua and Tokyo Blade. However, it does show a little bit of Ruby and what's going on with her idol stuff. And we got Arima, who's 
double dipping. She is double booked. She's doing both acting and singing, performing. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this dynamic works. And from what we saw in the opening, there are going to be some features for Ruby. We just don't know when. And it seems like they're going to showcase a lot of stuff from their past. And with I, and we must not forget that Aqua is going to try and get all the DNA samples from the men to find out who his dad is. And that's our re cap review of Oshinoko season two, episode one, AKA episode 12. Well, let me know what you thought about this episode. Let me know what you thought about this video. And let me know if you wanna be like season two, episode one, or just be like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, et cetera, et cetera. And we also host podcasts across worlds, Hawaii's number one podcast for anime and manga. We also interview people in the anime industry. So if you're interested in that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Superfina channel, reviewing, recapping Oshinoko season two, episode one, aka episode 12. Hope you guys like this video, and we'll see you on the next one. Ahuiho!